So the difference between mismanaged facilities and income producing properties, all right? Mismanaged and income producing properties, which are kind of the two most important, the most popular thing, types of, of, of ways that you can invest in self-storage. Now, I think Laura was the one that said she owned the facilities. Um, you know, she, I mean, she owned apartment buildings, all right? Uh, I don't know if y'all if y'all know this, but like essentially the way it works in the in the multifamily world is that like seventy percent of all multifamily buildings are owned by REITs. Seventy percent are owned by REITs. Guess what? In the storage investing world, seventy percent are owned by people like me, mom and pop people. So the mom and pops like me. We are, once you have it, once you start your, once you build your building in 1980s and 1990s, and then 20 to 30 years later, guess what? Are you ready to sell those suckers? All right, you're ready to sell. So your target market is going to be mom and pop owners. Now, right now, that should really be focused on either secondary or tertiary markets. And most likely it's gonna be a tertiary market. Tertiary just means country, in the country, All right? So if you're looking in a primary market for a storage facility, unless you tell me that you've got millions and millions of dollars, most likely you're never gonna find a facility that you're gonna be able to buy. You need to be in a tertiary market right now because the market is so strong. People are buying in tertiary markets for seven and eight caps right now. Okay, and sometimes even six caps, you know, if you're like crazy, but um, so, you, you know, if you get into these markets, you have to like, if you, if you get into the uh, self storage investing world, you have to understand that location is very important right now for you to be looking. Okay, so whether or not you're interested in mismanaged facilities or income producing properties, all right, and there's no right or wrong way, mismanaged just means that you're more, you're a little bit more of a risk taker. Right, you're like, yeah, I can. I'm okay with coming out of pocket every single month. I know I'll be able to either find somebody to give me that money, or I have my own money, or maybe I can get the owner to be the bank, you know. And I'm I can think outside the box a little bit more. That's a mismanaged facility. Whereas an income producing property is just like, look, as soon as I buy that thing, I want to make money. All right, I already know I want to make money day one. All right. And, um, you know, and I know that maybe it won't have as much of a value add as it could be on the mismanaged side, but that's okay to me because what I like is I like appreciation and I like, you know, um, consistency and I want to be making money cash flow on a regular basis. And I just know that I'll pay that off and I'll own it in 10 or 20 years. Okay, that's an income producing property. So it's just two ways of looking at um, two ways of looking at your deals. Okay, those are the two most important. Yeah, so out of mismanaged facilities and income producing properties, which one are you interested in? I haven't, I've only given you two of the six different ways, but out of those two, are you leaning more towards like, I think I could do mismanaged or I think I'm in, in, interested in income producing properties. And then, or if you're saying like neither, I need, I don't wanna do either, then put neither into the chat. I would really love to know what you guys are interested in. So I see mismanaged, I see mismanaged. Good, I see income producing properties, mismanaged, mismanaged income producing, okay, good. Now with income producing properties, you just have to know that you're either going to bring your own money, you're going to partner an equity partnership, right, with the split, right? Or you can put 20% down, or maybe you're going to, you're going to, um, uh, you know, you're going to JV with somebody or something like this. So you know that like, you'll have to come, you will have to come up with some money, all right, on income producing properties, because you don't want to borrow money from a private lender at a super high interest rate. Remember I said the bank loans, the bank loans are, let's say, 5% or less, right, for 4 to 5%. But on a mismanaged facility, your private loan is going to be like 8, 9, 10 or higher percent interest rate, right? So you don't really want to, you know, buy an income producing property with the private lender. I just had a coaching session with like one of my, one of my students. And I actually have a, um, 
until that I'm, I'm wholesaling, um, which is an income producing property right now. And one of my students is interested in it. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to get a private lender to, um, to lend on it. And I said, you don't really want a private lender to lend it to you at 10% interest on an income producing property. Because the reason why is because you can just take that and get a bank, get a loan from a bank right? You can just take that and get a loan from a bank. So why would you pay 10% interest when you could just pay 5% interest? And he has the money for the down payment. He has the money for the down payment. But so I'm trying to convince him that he should just, you know, he should just get a loan. This, this, this is when income producing properties, you should just go to a bank and get a loan. Okay. Okay, good. We have a couple of questions. Mix would be good to get instant CF while getting others mismanaged up and running. Yes, only if you can get a decent deal owner finance. Exactly right. Yeah. So um, now what like what private lenders could do is maybe give you like a six month loan or a year loan to just purchase the property so that you could refi it out into a more loan. Because what happens with banks too is banks take a long time to close deals especially nowadays, it's taking 90 to 120 days to close a deal. And guess what? It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Okay. Because banks are just going to get super picky, right? Super picky. And um, so, so, uh, but the thing is that I love about storage is that banks love to invest in self-storage. Why? Why do you think banks love to invest in self-storage? Um, of all of the asset classes, banks love self-storage. And another thing that you can do is you can get an SBA loan. And the government loves storage facilities as well, too. Could you imagine, like, going, and this is a great idea, is looking up opportunity zones in your area, finding storage facilities that are within your opportunity zones, wherever you want to be, you know, at, finding a storage facility and then getting an SBA loan on top of that. Not only are you going to get all the tax credits from the opportunity zone, then you're going to get all those benefits of borrowing from an SBA loan as well, too. That would be an awesome deal. All right. And that's a very good tip if anybody lives in opportunity zones or knows what opportunity zones are. Or you can just Google it and see if you can find a storage facility in an opportunity zone and then go get a bank loan from the government. All right. You'd be making some money. You should bank it. All that stuff. Okay, good. So, um, so that's it. So we have uh, income producing properties and we have mismanaged facilities. Okay. Those are the two most popular. 